raising your hand that this is the first time that you've been at Summer Creek Bisco. And yes, this is a Summer Creek Bisco. You got the right spot. So we're going to have a lot of fun today. Uh, we're going to be celebrating the end of an interesting but successful year. And we're also excited about being back at Summer Creek High School for the first time since before Harvey. And then we've just got a lot to celebrate with the end of this year. And we're going to ask Dr. Paul Lyle to come up and lead us in a prayer, please. Would you please bow your heads? Heavenly Father, thank you so much for another day. Lord, thank you for this chance that we have to come together to celebrate, Lord, uh, what you're doing in our community. Lord, just thank you for a great school year. And Lord, we know through Scripture that you redeem horrible situations. And yet, Lord, we have seen how uh, through hard work, through commitment, Lord, through your uh, guiding principles, Lord, that you have redeemed what was such a horrible situation just nine months ago. Lord, I thank you for the men and women who are gathered here. And Lord, I pray that uh, we would honor you with our conversations today and with the things that we are looking forward to happening in our community. Lord, we love you. It's in Jesus' name I ask you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Paul. And one of the other things that I just want to lead a prayer for protection for our community. That's all right for everybody else. Father, we are so blessed that we came through uh, what went on over this past year. And I know that there are many people that are still struggling. And so we ask you, dear God, to protect our community, protect our families, and help our community to grow and be all that you want it to be. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so if you've got your agenda, I want to draw your attention to a few things. Uh, this is the Summer Creek Business Conference. Since a number of you are here for the first time, I want to give you a little bit of background. The BizCom got started as a group of people here at Summer Creek High School back in 2009. Uh, Trey Kramer was the principal at that time. He zipped in and zipped out. He's now one of the assistant superintendents and really was the person that made it possible for us to get started with this. But if you look at the bottom of this page, our mission is we seek to build positive community spirit by promoting involvement, safety, security and economic development in the Summer Creek area. So we hope today that you'll feel like we've done a lot to award that mission. But if you have input, please let us know. And, and for a moment, I want to just take a minute, and for everybody that's on the Summer Creek BizCon Advisory Board, would you please stand up, please? A number of you are not here today. Okay, there's some of the All right, so, there's, so please give them a round of applause. seats if you need it uh, they're right in here and I don't think most of the people right some <laughs> so we're so glad you're here and so one other person that I want to draw attention to Nolan Correa if you would raise your hand we're so glad to have you back here to serve as Summer Creek High School principal for three years please give him a round of applause job this year though because he went from being Summer Creek High School principal to being responsible for all the transportation grounds and everything from on the license D. Imagine that after the party. So Mr. Gray, we're so glad you're here. So okay, so I want to elect let me see I saw some people come in. Uh, if you represent an elected official, raise your hand please. We want to recognize you. We're so glad you're here as well. Thank you so much. Okay. In order for us to be able to have this kind of event, we have sponsors, and the first sponsor I want to introduce to you is Lake Houston Family YMCA. Now, Chris, where are you, Chris? Bush, where are you? Come on up. Uh, he was taking a nap for a moment because they just had some exciting news that he's going to be telling you. Come on, now. he's even walking like he's a little tired. So. Uh, how's everybody doing? This is the first meeting since I've came to Lake Houston. I can say we are officially open. So, uh, not necessarily waste time, but I uh, just want to use the time that I'm given to thank everybody here for the support. There's a lot of people in this room who donated financially, given support to me, given support to our team, our members. Um, and so I just want to thank you guys for that. We still have a long way to go. 
uh, to get through phase two and the, and the construction to get all of our expensive stuff upstairs in case, uh, God forbid, something happens again. Uh, but thank you guys very much for being here. We're, we're very excited to be here. with you too. Thank you. And another wonderful partner that we have is Memorial Northeast. Uh, our family personally has helped your bottom line multiple times and we're glad that you treated us so well. And we have here with us Nikki. Where are you Nikki? Okay come on up. And Nikki is the Chief Nursing Officer. Thank you for being here. Please give a round of applause. Other uh, our gold sponsors, 
back in the back, Wayne Johnston and his better half, Erica, is not here today. But I know Jackie's here with Chick-fil-A and Fall Creek. And without Wayne and Erica, this would not exist. Because we said, we're going to have a meeting back in 2009, and we're going to have Chick-fil-A. People came. So we really appreciate you, Wayne. And then PNS Sportswear, are you represented today? Yeah. All right. Hi. We're so glad you're here Thank today. You. Thank you so much. And then make sure if you need sportswear to go see her. <laughs> and then our silver sponsors, PostNet Summerwood. I don't think the printing princess is here today, but uh, she's, on vacation. she's on vacation. What a time. Okay, and then Sterling McCall Honda, are you here today? <laughs> okay. All right, so now before we get started with the meat of our program, I did want to draw attention to a couple of other things. At the, at the very bottom from noon to 1215, we do something here that's a little bit different than some of the VizComs. We have a time where you can come up and take 15 to 30 seconds to talk about whatever business or organization you're with. Now we try and keep that very concise and then we cut it off about 1215. So, Right there toward the end, we try to be very punctual with everything that we do. At the end, you'll be able to have come up and start getting in line to be able to talk. And then at 12.15, we'll cut that off. So I uh, just want to make sure of that. And then the other thing is, with what we've been through this past year, our advisory board voted that we ought to do something special for a couple of leaders in our community. Uh, Jenna Armstrong, who is the CEO and president of the Lake Houston Area Chamber of Commerce could not be here with us today, but we wanted to tell her, and if you don't mind, Chris, telling her, and by the way, Chris is with the uh, Lake Houston Area Chamber of Commerce, and she is working as the liaison with the discom. She's very busy, and we appreciate you, but we've got a gift card for her to go to dinner on us, and I just want her to know how much we appreciate her. And then Mr. McDonald, kind of a cushy job for him this year too, that he got put in as principal here right before Harvey, and your leadership has just been amazing. And so we've got something up here for you. When you come up to get ready to speak, you can take that with you and you can enjoy it. So please give them a round of applause. Thank you, everybody, for coming today. I'm Brett McDonald, uh, honored to be the president, the uh, principal of Summer Creek High School, and uh, Mr. Perry in the back, my good friend. And we both shook hands during graduation and took care of our seniors this year. Want to make sure they had a great school year, but. Uh, Honor and privilege to be here today. I'm going to keep it very brief. I want to kind of give you an update what's going on with Summer Creek High School. Um, of course, came in here this year, and then three weeks later, at Wood Creek Middle School, three weeks later, here comes Hurricane Harvey, and so then we have to go ahead and start the school year, my first year here, and it's just been a fantastic school year. So our scores are in. Uh, so we, we go to a half day of the school year, so everyone's worried about what is our scores going to look like when it comes to end of course exams. and. Uh, so you have five tests, uh, U.S. History, Biology, English 1, English 2, and Algebra 1, and all five scores across the board all increased 5 to 8 percent across the board of our schools. <laughs> all of the scores, not only passing went up, but all the scores in master, meaning they get the committed rate, they all go up also. So how exactly does that happen when you cut your days in half? You have a great staff of people here that work hard. You kind of cut the fluff out of your day, make sure you get to the meat of the day. I'm very proud of our, of our staff and everyone here making sure that we were there in that situation. So we've also provided documentation to the, uh, the district. We have Dr. Brown in the back, Dr. Fagan. Our discipline, rate, our discipline here went down 78%. We went from you know about 5,000 referrals, meaning ID badges and tardies and other little things that kids do. And you cut that more than 78% when you go with the days like we had. So when your scores go up, your discipline goes down, your attendance goes up, there's a lot of good things happening right now. So then when you take that, and then you have evaluations throughout the school year with the great staff that I have, my administrative team, and we have to identify there's some teachers that may be need to find another place for employment. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> so when I have 25 to 27 of those tough meetings, they're tough meetings to have, and then whenever, it's kind of like when you go shopping. It's nice to go shopping when you have money in your pocket. 
So when I have 25 conversations with people and say, I'm sorry, I thank you for your service at Summer Creek, but next year we're going to go another direction with this teaching position. And I go to job fairs, and in my back pocket I have teachings openings, and I can hire rock stars. And I have people that want to transfer to Summer Creek from a task to see the Kingwood, Kingwood Park, <coughs> Crosby, Klein, all the way to Channel View, North Shore. When I get their team leaders, their department chairs that want to come to Summer Creek, I was hired. It's kind of like I had five-star recruits that are all coming in here. So if you were to imagine what I'm in right now, you take the, I don't want to go like this way, but I'm going to go this way, <laughs> the bottom 25 teachers off your staff and add 25 rock stars to your staff. Imagine what Summer Creek, where we're going right now. So we're very excited with what's happening right now. down, great teachers coming in. We are all but fully staffed for three coaching positions, meaning two assistant basketball positions and a soccer coach position. It's June the 6th, 7th, <laughs> fully staffed. And we'll get something here and there, but in my world, hiring in April and May is critical to our success instead of hiring in July and August because I get the first rate employees, teachers that want to be here. That's all we're looking for, people that want to be here. And that leads me into my next tremendous hire. Someone that is absolutely, if you haven't had a chance to meet him yet, if you haven't, make sure you meet him, shake his hand, but the energy around this place and now our athletic department and our football program, a person that is absolutely all in. Watch this football program. You're gonna watch it explode in the next couple of years. We have some rivalries in the area that will be taken care of. Some, uh, <laughs> some going on right now. But yeah, we're, it's going to be our football program has taken a step, and people are transferring in to play football because of the vision that he has shared, bringing in his winning from Port Arthur Memorial, his years of playing at the University of Texas, his vision for us all in. I really want to introduce our new football coach and Summer Creek High School coach, Kenny Harrison. about being here at Home ISD. Um, I've been in Port Arthur for the last 20 years, nine years as a head coach, 20 years as a coach there. And I told my wife, if we ever leave Port Arthur, Texas, it had to be a great place. And as we looked around the state of Texas, there's no better place than Home ISD. So I told my wife, after doing research, looking at Wood Creek Middle School, the high school, the direction and the vision of Mr. McDonald, there's no other place that I'd rather be than Home ISD and Summer Creek High School. My vision here is all in. I'm going to do everything possible to make sure that we win a state championship here at Summer Creek High School. Um, just to let you know this, I've been, like I say, coaching 20 years. Um, our vision here is to play hard, play smart, play together, dominate all the opponents, and win a state championship. I'm moving my family here. My daughter will be going to school here. She's a starlet um, coming up. This fall, we're excited about being here. If you want to see some excitement, if you want to be the top team in Umbias D, this is the place to be. I love Umbias D. I love Mr. McDonald and his vision. I love being here. I'm excited about it. If you're up around the school or the campus, come visit us. Um, I look forward to seeing you in the fall and look forward to winning a lot of football games and winning a state championship at Summer Creek High School. Thank you. That we're that they're having the, the athletic department at Summer Creek High School is having the Bulldog open. And it's going to be at Tour 18 tomorrow. So this is kind of like a party getting ready for the golf tournament. But if you didn't happen to sign up already, I wanted Sonia and Neil, would you mind coming up for just a moment and just say a little brief uh, information about the Summer Creek High School golf tournament tomorrow? Good morning. <coughs> I am the treasurer of the All Sports Booster Club, and I have been for going on six years. We've had a, a golf tournament for nine years, and I've been participating for seven, so I know it pretty well. Tomorrow at 8 a.m., we're going to have a four-person scramble. It's a shotgun start, and we do have slots open. So if you'd like to join us tomorrow, you'll get breakfast, you'll get lunch, and then you'll get to help support the new vision of Coach Harrison in the 
vision that Mr. McDonald put in place last year. So see me afterwards, and I'll get you set up. So, how many of you have been in the Summerwood Fall Creek area since back, say, 2005? How many? Okay. Wow. Yeah. I have a reason. Uh, I just wanted to mention, at that time, if I'm not mistaken, you can correct me if I'm wrong, at that time, Summerwood Elementary was the only educational institution in this area. Mm -hmm. So now, if you look at it, we've got a number of quality, they, I don't know, it's for educating young people before elementaries. We also have Lakeshore Elementary. We also have Fall Creek Elementary and several other elementary schools. Wood Creek Middle School, Summer Creek High School, and Lone Star. That you can actually get a four-year degree through that. So I wanted to take, make a point. Is anybody here from Lone Star today? Because I really want to brag on the quality of education that you can get from Lone Star. And you've heard about, raise your hand, Evan and Marcy. Okay, Evan Gaddy is our son, and he went to Lone Star, and I want to tell you about the quality of education you can get from this. He has a degree, he has a job, he has a new, wonderful wife, and if that's not a bad for an education, I tell you, there, Evan is a videographer, and, I'm sorry, that's right, that's right, and so uh, Evan is a videographer, and Marcella is a photographer, and they're top notch, they were chosen to uh, do all of the video for Comic Palooza last week, and that's from Lone Star College. So, if you get a chance to meet them, we're very, very proud of them. I love you both. So, so, uh, so now one of the things we've talked about a lot. Where are you? Okay, great. Okay. So, one of the things that is top of mind, I think, for a lot of people, Carmen's going to be able to address today. We really so sincerely appreciate you taking the time to be with us. Please give her a round of applause. I'm actually very honored to be here. I owned a small business, a $10 million business in Kingwood for many, many years. And I'm very appreciative of your time because it was so hard to allocate being in town for a bizcom when I owned a business. So I will not take too much of your time, but I will be here afterwards to ask me any questions. I'm a very accessible person. You can call me on my cell phone, email me um, and afterwards. So just to tell you a little bit about myself, I've been in Kingwood off and on since 1992. Um, my husband's been here since 1980. He was even an original volunteer firefighter in Kingwood. Um, he actually went to high school with some people in, in the room. I have two kids that both went to Kingwood High School. Um, and uh, up until prior to Harvey, three years prior to Harvey, um, I retired to just stay home and be with my kids before they went off to college. Um, I was the president of National Charity League. I worked for the USO. And I was a deacon for First Presbyterian Church. And how did I become a board member from the same sense of river authority, you ask? And why would somebody want to do that? <laughs> <laughs> well, on August 25th, I flooded, and this is my home. And I don't need any sympathy because I am a much stronger person after, as of this day. I'm actually in the middle of a two-day conference right now down at University of Houston, where I learned that 11% of uh, Harris County actually flooded. Can you believe that? 11% of Harris County flooded. And 100% of Harris County was affected by Harvey. It actually gives me chills to think about the fact that everybody either volunteered, worked for a job that was flooded, their business was flooded, they cooked a meal, um, they were put out because they had to um, go to a different school, or no longer could shop and maybe had to go in as many as 12 to 15 miles just to buy any or milk. So Harvey was actually the second most costliest storm. And we don't refer to Harvey actually um, uh, as actually a hurricane. We actually refer to Harvey as a storm because the financial cost of Harvey came from the flooding and not the actual hurricane itself. It's the second most costly um, event in U.S. history ever, um, which is kind of a, a scary thought because um, 
Before I became on the river board, I had no idea what flooding could do. I had no idea that we planned in advance for 50 years to supply water. 50 years to supply water to Exxon and to supply water in communities <coughs> yet aren't even planned. We, uh, flood mitigation prior to Harvey was unfortunately not a financial priority of either the city or the county. It's very sad when you look at budgets that were allocated to flood mitigation. I will tell you that Houston flooding has no easy answers. It's not going to be fixed tomorrow, and it is estimated by Judge Emmett that it will cost a minimum of $25 billion to fix flooding in Harris County alone. Um, most of these projects are very, very complicated because, for example, to fix flooding in, in Harris County, or on the San Jacinto River, we must, and I'm going to go into this a little further, we must work with our adjacent um, counties because uh, water doesn't start in Harris counties. Water doesn't start in, on the San Jacinto River. And we must work with places like Montgomery County that has no direct budget for flood mitigation. Oh, okay, wait, 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 go back, sorry. <laughs> um, so we can never protect ourselves from another Harvey, and I'm not here to say that there's even any easy answer. It was, we had 44 inches of rain during Harvey. That is just unpredictable. It is also unpredictable where the water actually went. Um, so we had 120,000 structures um, harmed in Harris County alone. And there is absolutely no way to ever predict a Harvey event in order to plan for it. But we're looking to plan for rain and flooding in smaller events. Hopefully we don't have, you know, anything even close to a Harvey in the future. Um, I will tell you that this has started already. It was an awesome rainstorm <coughs> plan, five to six inches um, during Holy Week. And Dave Martin had the tenacity or the foresight to actually get Lake Houston lowered in advance of this storm. But if, if, if Dave Martin hadn't have done that, you know, we could have had a potential flooding. And it shouldn't be one man out there deciding to lower a river when he happens to look at the weather report and sees rain in the future. We can't operate as a community like that anymore. And I'm going to tell you with the focus after Harvey, we will no longer operate like that. There are no two storms that are alike. So, you know, there's been a lot of things that have happened that have gotten us to this problem of flooding urbanization, uncontrollable growth, and I learned a lot over the last two days that rivers actually change direction. Rivers actually move from one place to another, and we can't actually predict that. Um, so we just have to be flexible in our planning and stay on top of that. There's many, many sources of uncontrollable water that comes into the San Jacinto River watershed, and there are so many agencies involved. This is just a small list. This is our watershed here being the San Jacinto uh, River, starting way up here and going down to the lower San Jacinto um, and Lake Houston, which being here. And actually, the San Jacinto River Authority, if you don't know this already, we do more than operate a dam. We actually have five, um, five divisions. One of the divisions is we supply all the water to, um, to the woodlands. We actually supply all the water down here to people from Murph's Church to Exxon Mobil. So we're planning for that water. So when we looked at um, the fact that the San Jacinto River Authority operated businesses all along the entire watershed, the governor said to us, um, hey, none of these agencies have a direct taxing authority that can pull money together and pull a strategy together and have oversight over all of these areas and encourage people to work together, except for the San Jacinto River Authority. And at the time, we weren't really set up for that. In fact, I remember going to the private meeting with the governor and the governor announcing it, and I said, hmm, I didn't think we talked about this in the kitchen five minutes ago when you asked to meet with me. So I was a little bit shocked. But uh, as a, he gave us two directives. One 
is to actually manage an area-wide um, overall flood study and two, to do whatever was necessary immediately to mitigate downstream flooding until some of the larger projects that we may propose in the future can be implemented. So when we did that, we went out and we found a great guy, an engineer, Chuck Gilman. He was former city manager from Aggieland. Um, he came to us with a ton of experience and he's now our director of flood management at the San Jacinto River Authority. This is awesome because he's been on a road show since he started, been drinking from a higher fire hose that hasn't stopped. And he's been out to every place from the east <coughs> to the west fork to um, the other day he had to go to a presentation with me in Magnolia. <coughs> and he's really just absorbing everything that has happened and what solutions are being proposed on the table. Um, um, the short term uh, mitigation strategies that we're now looking at is obviously dredging. If you're not familiar, the San Santa River Authority is not directly overseeing this. There are two parts of the dredging going on right now. One is taking the debris off the surface and the shoreline. That's being managed from the city of Houston. That project is actually underway. <coughs> There's also the dredging that is the emergency dredging that's happening. We'll start, the bids will be open on the 9th. It was delayed a little bit to give some of the major dredging companies a little bit of extra time. But by July or so, we should see the dredgers actually removing the sand from the bottom of the river and restoring it to the 2011 uh, conditions. Prior to being on the River Authority, I can remember um, when we were annexed complaining that the river needed to be dredged. And that was in the late 2000s. And nothing ever happened. And did I know at that time that sediment was uh, part of the natural design of a river? No, I didn't. But now I get to go to the Aggregate Contractors Association <laughs> and learn all about how aggregate contractors and legislation um, affects how we get sand in the river and hopefully be a part of a solution that will stop that from happening. I know Dan Huberty's worked significantly on that. Um, anyway, so those are the two dredging, two stories. That will not fix our problem. Dredging alone will never fix our problem. And the funds that are allocated to that are just on the west fork. That will be going from 6959 to just a little bit east of the Lake Houston Bridge. You may have noticed if you came here across the Lake Houston Bridge today, you probably saw a brand new um, predictive um, gauge on the bridge. It's on this side of the bridge. When you come across, there was a bunch of big old guys looking up at it, trying to figure out, uh, figure out. when I looked at it today, I was like, what are you guys doing? Um, anyway, they, that is, that, that gauge, we are in the process of putting in predictive gauges all the way down the river. Did anyone in this room flood, uh, aside from me? Were you on the, uh, on the river looking, hey, where's the water coming from? What am I supposed to do? Well, I was, and there was no, there was very few places, and I didn't know where to go at the time to go and look to see if I should evacuate, if I shouldn't evacuate, um, what my plan should be. Um, so I just stayed there and moved my cars to higher ground, not high enough grounds. We are now putting, <laughs> we are now putting our, our predictive monitoring in. At the time, during Harvey, people have said, Oh, the San Jacinto River Authority stopped reporting the water that was being released. Actually, what happened is the gauge at the golf course at Kingwood Country Club uh, flooded and broke and was no longer in operation. And I didn't know enough about it to go look someplace else at a different gauge. But now we're putting predictive gauges that will actually show the water as it moves down the river. It'll show the rate of the water, where the water will be at any certain standpoint. And they're also in the process of sending you um, forced alerts to your cell phone. So I have a 714 phone number. I'm lucky enough to, in most cases, not get a lot of random um, emergency things that don't, don't, don't apply to me on my cell phone. Well, the way the emergency response will now be working from the Harris County um, will be that those will be forced alerts by whatever cell phone tower you are near. It will tell you what, uh, where to go and what to do. What, um, what the biggest concern is, is we don't want six inches of 
rain, and everybody get hit in the roads <coughs> and evacuate. Because we still need our emergency workers to be able to get on the roads and get to the people that are in harm's way and get to the people to evacuate them. So um, we've done a lot in the way that's coming out now to be able to notify you in a sense of emergency. And those things are, are being launched every month. It will be in place by July 1st. The thing everybody asks me about no matter where I go is, when are they going to lower the river, the lake, in Lake Conroe? Well, this is a two-fold strategy. Remember how I told you we all need to work together in the beginning of this, and there's a lot of different organizations? <coughs> you can't believe how many people have an opinion about lowering Lake Conroe. <laughs> you can't believe how many people think it's more important to run their boat than to not flood their neighbors downstream. <laughs> well, that's just my personal opinion. I didn't say that. I just get a lot of them calls about that. Um, I will tell you that we have an amazing governor, an amazing legislative staff, amazing senators, and we should be announcing something fairly soon. As of now, the Sandy Center River Authority has, has voted to lower Lake Conroe on a seasonal basis just during hurricane season to up to two feet. Yeah. We voted that, that six weeks ago. We finally got the city of Houston to buy off on our strategy and agree to a, a lowering of Lake Houston on an on-call basis, so a pre-release basis. So our, our, the TCEQ, um, the Coastal Water Authority, which governs Lake Houston, um, they don't want us to wait until there's a storm in the forecast and then dump our water, because it's going to pull their watershed, and who, remember I told you, we never know where these storms are going to hit? So we can't do that. We have to pre-release this water on a seasonal basis, so that Lake Houston, which is a much shallower lake throughout most parts of it, and water is actually pulled from Lake Houston for drinking water, um, can maintain a constant level except for when there is a true hurricane. Lake Houston can dump its water, as we saw in my previous slide, in um, three days. It can dump a foot a day. Um, lake Conroe, we can only lower one to two inches a day safely and not flood our neighbors downstream. Oh, okay. Okay, next one. So as a long-term strategy, I'm really excited to announce that on Tuesday, well, the engineering company was approved to um, come up with a long-term strategy for the entire um, Sandy Center River Authority, Authority flood uh, watershed. There are actually 535 miles in our watershed, and every, 500, every part of 535 miles will be studied. But again, these, most of these are not even in Harris County, and that's why the governor said we have to have one strategy that affects upstream and downstream flooding. Um, we have $2 million leveraged, actually $2.6 million leveraged to this. And we are looking at enhanced uh, flood mitigation. We are direct partners with the city of Houston and Montgomery County and Harris County Flood Control in this study. Um, it's a really awesome thing because we're all finally working together as partners. One of the biggest problems when you look at flooding, because Kingwood was annexed, is when you look at dredging, even Ben's Ranch by you, you're like, there's so many people involved in that. Someone owns the bottom of the waterway. Someone owns the side of the waterway. Someone owns the street. We can't, we can't have that. We all have to work together and come up with one strategy, one area that, that can collect the money, and one area that can actually um, uh, implement the project. And this study will be the end to that. It will be awesome, and I hope you will continue to check back with us on some of the projects that will be coming out from that. And in final, these are some of the projects that are just under study and <coughs> being implemented now as, as long-term strategies. Um, we're actually need to not only dredge the whole entire bottom of the St. Louis Center River versus the East Fork and the West Fork, we need to come up with a maintenance strategy. We should be maintaining this river. Rivers silt by nature. And we silt more when we have sand mining on our river. Um, so we need a strategy to mitigate that so we don't get stuck in this situation again. I'm looking for a big, huge sand building contest when those drivers get out there. And I think you guys are the ones that should put this on. You guys have a pretty great group. 
Um, we also need to ensure that these aggregate processes aren't continuing to add to our problem on the San Jacinto River. Um, I'll stop with that because I might get someplace I don't mean to. Um, we also need to increase the capacity of the Lake Houston Dam. Right now we can only re uh, release 10,000 cubic feet per second. Lake Conroe can release 10 times that. Um, we need to create additional reservoirs upstream from us. And we need to have a bit, uh, additional building restrictions in adjacent counties. We also need to encourage reforestation from places like sand mining, so we can that had sand mining, so we can um, do positive mature growth moving forward. And again, we need to continue with our <coughs> flood prevention program. This doesn't need to be a one-time thing. We're going to be looking at this for the future and beyond. So. So we so appreciate having you here with us today. We have time for maybe one or two questions. Do you have anybody have one or two questions? Yes. If you can only lower it two inches a day, that's 12 days to lower it to full two feet. Mm -hmm. When the hurricane hits the Gulf, you don't have 12 days. So maybe I'm not understanding something. No, and you just made my points with that. Um, that or to maybe the Lake Conroe Association. We're going to lower one foot starting in May. We're going to lower it on dry days when there's no storm in the future because that's when we're the best time to lower the lake is. Then we'll wait again until uh, August 1st. Between August 1st and August 15th, we'll lower it um, to that same level that we lowered on May 1st with no. no it doesn't matter what's in the future of the, it's got to be all lowered on dry days, okay? So we're going to lower it, and then from August 15th to September 1st, we're going to lower it so it's at that two-foot level, when that is really historically when hurricanes have hit in the past. So whether there's a hurricane in the future or not, the lake is going to be lower because we cannot predict exactly what you said when a hurricane is in the future. Now, you could call and tell Mr. Blyer what he does. I really appreciate it. I'll give you his personal <laughs> <little. laughs> I wouldn't mind. <laughs> The, the controversy of, of what we're talking about too up there is, is the two foot. You, you got dry docks, you got dry boat docks, you got value going. And that's your struggle. And so, you know, the one foot, I think that's looking like Brandon Crichton and all them, it's, that's, a good, that's a good fit. So the, the going into two and three foot, that's the, the cluster. So, but anyway, it's worth, you know, it, it's a good plan. It's a good if plan. If you look historically from the USGS, we are looking at actually coming up with the average of where Mother Nature has taken us over the last 18 years. So two feet is on the average, uh, actually one foot eight inches, is on the average where Mother Nature has put us on August 1st over the past 18 years. Unfortunately, we've had two to three of the wettest years possible. And because of the way Lake, Houston, or Lake Conroe Dam works is it's a tainter gate, and not to go into too much technical thing is we don't lower a gate in terms of Lake Conroe. A tainter gate's a radial arm gate. We can never get water over the top of it. There's only 18 inches of freeboard here. So when it rains one inch, one inch of water in Lake Conroe, you have 18 inches of, of water in Lake, um, Lake Conroe. So immediately or shortly after, depending on the intensity of the rain, no matter what, we have to open Lake Conroe Dam. So we're opening the water. So people keep saying, well, why did you release so much water when Lake Conroe opened? And the fact is, is that we continue to have to release water. The more rain we're getting, the more water you have to release. And two feet will actually give us enough time to let downstream water flow out because you want to hold the water back at the farthest standpoint. We predict that that will give us enough way to hold it back in the inches of the rain depending on where it falls in the watershed. Thank you. I'm will sorry, I'll cut that off. Will you be able to be stay around yeah. afterwards? Okay. 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 Thank you so much. All right. We so appreciate you being here. And then I noticed Dr. Brown in the back. We're so glad you're here and thank you for all you've done for our community. We appreciate you. And then also, are there any school board members here today? 
If you didn't know this, the school board for Mount last day was voted the best in Texas again. Correct. And so Ian Adler, who is on our board, uh, made it possible for Levi to come and tell us about what's going on with Generation Park. Good to see you. Thanks a lot, Good to see you. All right. Yeah, I'm Levi Hermes, work for McCord Development, the owners of Generation Park. Really excited to be here today to give you a little bit of an update on what we have going on there at Generation Park, and specifically in uh, Redemption Square, our 52-acre lifestyle center that's uh, pretty comparable to a city center or something like that out west. Let me come on to the next slide. That's just to get you guys oriented. We're uh, basically just right across the street of uh, Westlake Houston Parkway there. I think you, pretty much everybody in the room is familiar with where we are. It kind of gives you an orientation of where we are within Generation Park. These are a few highlights of the Redemption <laughs> Square in a 52-acre lifestyle center. If you've ever spent time out in the city center, out west, uh, that, that's a really good comparable to what we're trying to build um, today. And it's about a five to ten year pro forma on building that out. We're probably two years in, so three eight years to go before that full 52 acres is built out. If you go on to the next slide. How many folks were able to make it out to the grand opening block party? All right, glad to see a good number. I uh, hope you all enjoyed it. We had a great time ourselves putting it on. And, couldn't be more thrilled with the attendance with over 2,500 people coming out for the event. And uh, we plan to have many more coming up here in the future. We'll do some smaller scale stuff kind of on a monthly or weekly basis and do big blowouts like this <coughs> quarterly or biannual just as we figure out the programming. But definitely many more to come. So thank you to all those that were able to come out. Now I'd like to talk to you just quickly about our office building called 250 SA Street. McCord Development actually moved our headquarters out there. Um, you know, we're that much uh, believers in Generation Park that we want to be out there every single day, you know, selling it to, to our constituents. And we have uh, Apache Industrial Services as the anchored tenant, um, taking up the fourth and fifth floors. If you go on to the next slide. Um, this just gives a little bit of overview about the availability we have in the office building. If anybody's looking for some office space to lease, we've got 11,000 square feet available. We've also got uh, one restaurant space available for lease if there's any restaurant tours out there. Come talk to me afterwards. And uh, this gives just a quick list of the tenants that are occupying the space. I mentioned Apache and McCord were out there. We also have Global Tubing that moved into the third floor. And uh, Viva's Bistro and BB&T Bank Branch are our first two retail tenants that are both operating there. So go on to the next slide. Here's just some action shots of the, the food uh, from Evo's that's been open for a couple weeks now. Hopefully some of you have been able to make it over there and check out the, the new Vietnamese food uh, moving in here to the Lake Houston area. I personally eat there about four, day, four times a week probably. <laughs> well, you know, a little bit. It's really great food and if you haven't made it out yet, we welcome you to, to come by and uh, say hello to John and Mary Min, the, the family owners and operators of Bebo's. Um, they have their current location at Bebo's Cafe at 90 in the Beltway, so I think some people are familiar with the good quality of food they have there. And here at Bebo's Bistro in Redemption Square, they've even stepped it up on another level, and it's really great. Welcome you to come out and check it out. We have some really exciting news. Um, the jewel box space that's about 7,700 square feet fully glass enclosed. It's going to be a really nice restaurant space. We leased that up a few weeks ago to a Houston restaurant tour that has four or five locations in a loop. Uh, some really successful urban locations. And this is his first foray out into the suburbs. And he's doing a, a concept that will be pretty similar to a local foods or a, a true foods, kind of a good healthy option, but it's also going to have a huge full bar, so all those calories you save on the food. <laughs> if you go to the, the next uh, slide here, it shows some of the precedent images of the architects are getting inspiration for what that space is going to look like. So um, they're planning to do this large kind of horseshoe shaped bar that you see here that will be really nice and, and really fun. It's actually going to be, uh, have sort of two concepts baked into one because they'll have a a wood fire pizza uh, oven going on there too, so some good healthy, kind of gluten-free pizza styles and stuff like that going on. So 
we're really excited that that should be opening up in uh, first quarter of 2019. It unfortunately it takes a while to build out a space that looks that nice, but uh, stay tuned for when those guys are opening soon, and we'll uh, also be announcing the name and the restaurant tour here in the coming weeks. So stay tuned for that. I want to talk quickly about our apartment buildings that are under construction. We're about three months in right now working on the foundation and poured the first slab yesterday, so that's really exciting for us. Um, we'll be pre-leasing um, next summer, uh, late spring to early summer. If you go on to the next slide, this shows a quick rendering of what it's going to look like at completion. It's going to be 251 units, and it's going to be the first luxury apartments out here in the Lake <coughs> area. Um, and when I, I call it luxury because, it's, you know, as compared to the garden style apartments across the street, which are great and have their place, this is going to have a wrap garage in the middle of this big complex. So you have covered parking at each level that you live at, which is really nice. Not having to go upstairs or elevators bringing in the groceries. You're going to have 10 foot clear ceilings, granite countertops, stainless steel appliances, you know, all the works for good luxury living out here in the Lake Houston area. So um, I invite you to check out uh, 255SA.com and sign up for the listserv if you're interested. And when we start leasing some spaces here, we'll be sending out um, the deals once we start first leasing up, you know, whether it's first three month rent or, or what have you. Um, but sign up there and stay tuned on uh, what uh, the, the updates on, on that project. And it's also going to have uh, ground floor retail along this side, framing our office building that also has ground floor retail. So again, kind of just giving you that city center type environment of a nice landscape plaza with shops, restaurants, bars on either side. Uh, just a great place to live, work, and play. And the last update here for Redemption Square is that our Courtyard Marriott Hotel has broken ground and will also be delivering around the same time the first uh, phase of the apartments deliver, so next summer. That's going to be 144 rooms there. And uh, a lot of people, when they think of Courtyard Marriott, you know, it's, it's a nice hotel, but it's, it's pretty standard. Um, we really drove the design guidelines on this one to and kind of um, forced Courtyard to, you know, step up the game a little bit. So um, if you go to the next slide, you'll see a rendering here that kind of shows uh, more of that kind of urban lofty style and the architecture uh, a little bit. Just, we feel above and beyond your your typical courtyard Marriott, and we're really excited to be bringing that here to the Lake Houston area. Um, yeah, that's the end of my presentation. I'll be hanging around afterwards if you have any other detailed questions. Before we bring the last uh, person up to speak, if you want to be one of the people that get to talk for 15 seconds, 30 seconds, please come on up. And I know, let me see here, I wanted to make sure, Ashley, if you don't mind coming up, and we'll be one of the first ones up here. And Tracy, we should be able to, and if you all want to come in, you can just come up right here, and then we'll go right into that after we get finished with the next one. So the next one is a kind of life I was talking about with the uh, over at HEB curbside. I love using the HEB curbside. I had to really pray about it before I really shared it. <laughs> and I feel the same way about the next thing that we're going to be talking about, and that's called Balmore. I don't know if you've heard of Balmore, but first of all, I want to just raise your hand if you don't mind. Rose White is right here, and she is with DR Horton. She is a sales counselor and a very professional and wonderful. It's made it possible for us to have Anita Nunez, who we met a number of years ago, I didn't, and she is going to be talking about Balmoral. Please give her a round of applause.
also Lakeside Villages. Um, it's located um, just north of Beltway 8, right off of Woodland Hills. Um, it is the home of the very first Crystal Clear Lagoon. I don't know if you all have heard about the Crystal Lagoon. Uh, we have beautiful billboards all across town now, kind of betraying that. Um, it, is, it comes with bragging rights because it is the very first one being built in Texas. Currently in the U.S., they only exist in Florida. Um, Emerson, Tampa just um, opened a brand new one about three weeks ago and had a wonderful grand opening there. They exist um, all over the world um, in probably over 60 countries, mostly on resort properties and condo type properties. Um, I personally believe this is the wave of the future and we're going to see more and more Crystal Lagoons coming into the U.S. market. Um, our Crystal Lagoon um, in Balmoral um, we'll have depths up to eight feet. Uh, it features a kid's cove and two beaches, a family beach with cabanas and lounge chairs, Serenity Beach with also, also will include uh, volleyball. The lagoon uh, is the anchor of an eight-acre eight, eight amenity village. It's a $13 million village that includes a 7,500 square foot clubhouse, along with a workout facility, meeting rooms, and an infinity edge pool that overlooks the lagoon a food truck courtyard, a hammock park, a sand volleyball court, event lawns, playgrounds, and a splash pad. A 12-foot wide green bolt system will allow, will allow our residents to take um, a more eco-friendly means of transportation, whether it be an e-bike, a golf cart, a Segway, um, to and forth some of the amenities and other points of interest in our community. The Crystal Lagoon and Amenity of Village in Balmoral is set to open late August if our developer and owner has its way. Um, but it is subject to change due to weather. We know how that can affect construction as always. The Crystal Lagoon and Amenity Village is primarily for our residents, but there will be options for corporate events to be held there. The first phase of construction of the Crystal Lagoon is already completed. The excavating of the two-acre lagoon um, and installing the pipe system for the environmentally friendly technology has already been installed. Um, we are now moving on to the second phase of installing the liner um, that is currently underway right now. Um, this is an exciting new step that allows us to start filling the lagoon with water. Um, that we hope to happen either end of this week or next week. It will take about two weeks to fill the lagoon with five million gallons of water. Uh, the patented technology of Crystal Lagoons um, and the multinational water innovation company behind this lagoon drastically reduces the amount of chemicals used to maintain the crystal blue waters. The lagoon also uses a hundred times fewer chemicals than traditional pool settings and consumes only 2% of the energy required by a traditional pool filtration system. The result is lower maintenance, maintenance costs and minimal environmental impact. Um, in Balmoral, we are very proud to be zoned to Humble ISD. Our students currently um, attend Ridge Creek Elementary, Wood Creek Middle School, and Summer Creek High School. Go Bulldogs. Uh, my daughter graduated here in 2014, so I too live in Northeast Humble area. I'm very proud to be here. Uh, Belmoral, last but not least, is a um, development of Land Tejas. Land Tejas was established in 1997. It, this company has developed more than 10,000 acres across communities, and today more than 25,000 families call Land Tejas a community home here. Uh, if you would, join me in watching this video so you can see the progression of this wonderful new community that's here in the humble area. No moral amenity center is going to be a great place for you <laughs> Welcome to the Valmoral Amenity Village. The Valmoral Amenity Center is going to be a great place for you and your neighbors to socialize and enjoy the lagoon. This beautiful clubhouse is the hub of the amenity center. The clubhouse features a state-of-the-art fitness room, events room for rent, 
office space, and a great community living room that spills out onto the clubhouse terraces. Adjacent to the clubhouse is the welcome booth. This is where you and your family will check into the lagoon. 